Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Joining me for a face-to-face -face conversation with me today is Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar. General Ravi Shankar, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's Namaskar channel. Namaskar and thanks a lot, Mr. Sri Ayer. It's a nice thing to interact with you face to face. Um, you know, we have talked with General Ravi Shankar on various topics and I thought why not pick something that perhaps you have not covered before but it's equally important, his interaction with some very leading personalities and, and today we are going to talk about two very important people but before we jump into that, may I request all of you to please like this video and if you have not subscribed to our channel or Gunner Shot, this is going to be also airing on Gunner Shot. I request you to subscribe to both channels. We both serve different things and, and uh, General Ravi Shankar is very, very, very focused and very, very up to date on a lot of things that you don't want to miss. So, General Ravi Shankar, two people that you have worked with that um, you know really impressed you I think. Uh, I, I would like you to start describing this and I might give in a story here or there but the floor is yours sir. Well, thank you. Uh, right, uh, what you said and to all the viewers, the two people who I served with and you know who actually very impressed me and made a left an impression on me and in, on India are Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam or previous president and Mr. Manohar Parikar or former Raksha Mantri. There are certain fundamental technologies which no one gave us. No one gave us this missile technology. This is completely indigenous. A complete space technology which uh, what it is today is indigenous. Uh, uh, third is the yeah, atomic energy. right? We got initial help from a lot of people. We got a lot of other uh, things from many people. But the fundamental technologies which we had to we had to crack. Now it's my belief that if you have these three technologies, which is homegrown, then you are strategically independent to a large extent. And if you see today, it is around these three technologies which are the foundation for our further growth. And that's happening. Right? And people say we are not Atmanarbar in defense and all that. Yeah, to a large extent we are not. But again, what's happened in the past, say 5 to 10 years, maybe 15 years, uh, you see we are uh, independent or rather full technology we have for shipbuilding. Today we have complete technology for uh, artillery. Then you air defense. These three we are through and so actually in terms of technology we have a lot signals, telecommunication, we have got tremendous technology and I thought Mr. Manohar Parikar you know, did a lot in this field uh, though he was uh, you know the defense minister for a short time just in my opinion, uh, he was the best defense minister I've known. So, we have kind of smoothly segued into our second uh, person that we are going to talk about, uh, Mr. Manohar Parikar. Um, we have had conversations offline about what the things that you've got and accomplished with him. Uh, some things probably can be shared on air. Yeah, yeah, why not? So, <laughs> I, I'll yield the floor to you, sir. You've, uh, you've had the honor of working with him and uh, Many things that you've shared with me, I mean, I'll leave it to you, whichever ones you would like to share with our viewers. But viewers, please do tune, stay, watch it till the end. It's a lot of good stuff coming your way. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Manohar Parika was Chief Minister of Goa when I first met him. I was the GOC of uh, MGNG area uh, in Bombay. And uh, MGNG is Maharashtra, Gujarat and Goa. Goa was one of the states which was in my jurisdiction. So I went to meet and call on him and we just had a cup of tea and that was the time when I was to conduct the Durand Cup in Goa. He helped me and that was the end of the story. Uh, this was in 2014, early 2014. Uh, just short of, just after that the elections took place, Mr. Narendra Modi came to power, the BJP government came to power. And soon I heard that 
Mr. Manohar Parikar was to become the defense minister. And he did become, I think somewhere on October, November, if I mm. remember. Right, 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 right. He right, did right. become. And, uh, and I became the DG artillery in October uh, 2014. And I moved to Delhi. He also moved to Delhi. So this was just about a month after I took over my appointment. So one morning I get a call. Says, Look, uh, that's at 9 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, you have to give a presentation to the defense minister on complete artillery procurement. I said, what do I cover? Said, we don't know what you're going to cover. You cover what you want. The defense minister has asked for a presentation on artillery. So I said, okay, they will go. So I went, gave this presentation. The vice chief was there, deputy chief was there, and everyone was there, and uh, defense secretary. And everyone, of course, the, the, we were all under him, in any case, as Raksha Mantri. So one of the first things he said, I'm very serious about artillery and I think, uh, you know, we should have good artillery in India. I said, yes, there's no doubt about it. And then, of course, uh, he also made him think, look, till now, it's been 30 years since we got buffers. We've not got a new gun. I said, yes, I agree with you. What are you doing about it? Your DG artillery. We've just taken over. I said, okay. Let's start. I just had one slide with me and I put it on. I said, this gives the complete picture of artillery, what my the procurements at this point of time are and what our efforts are for a development and indigenization of artillery and everything. He said, okay, let me hear. Others were trying to say anything. He says, no, let the DGRT speak. Let him speak. He is the senior most artillery officer, isn't it? Let him speak. So after that, no one spoke. It was one to one between him and I. Uh, I gave my views out, everything. He heard. And after that, he said, you've given me seven programs for guns. How much tenure do you have? I said, two years. He said, yeah, two years is good. In two years, what will you achieve? I said, I'll achieve the first four. Are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm pretty sure, but I need your help and I need everyone's help. I can't do it alone. He said, yeah, that's given. And then what? I said, more than the guns, I'm interested in ammunition because India at that time, we were short of ammunition. He said, yeah, whatever we, we take, it takes to uh, make good that ammunition, we do that. And he said, okay, fine, I, I'm very clear about the whole thing, but I'm very uh, also clear that for me, artillery is prime for defense of the nation. I, I mean, I just kept quiet because he was making a statement of fact. And uh, then he turned to the vice chief and said, I want the DGRT to brief me uh, every week. You will come and brief me. And uh, I said, fine, no problems. Uh, he said, no, guy, week might be too early, too fast, every month. For every month, you will come and personally brief me. I said, no problems. So he said, the first briefing will start after a week. I said, okay, I'll come go to you. So I went to him. Week later, that same slide which I showed him on a one sheet of paper, one sheet of paper with him. Only one column added progress since the last talk. So I put down progress since the last talk, gave it to him. I said, sir, this is what I showed you. This is the progress which has happened. And I need A, B, C points to be done. And I need your help for it. Leave it to me. So he passed orders. Before the end of the day, all people were there, oh, give me this file, Yeah, what are you told the defense minister, this has to be done, that has to be done, and everything started moving. And then it became a regular feature. I would get a call, all first, between the first, second, third of the month, his secretary used to call me early in the morning, he says, sir, defense minister wants you to meet him. And I used to go and meet him invariably at about 8, 8.30 in the morning. He would be in his office by then. And at that time in Senabhavan, not, not in Senabhavan, in South Block, uh, you know, the only people 
who were there at 8.30 in the morning was the defense minister, his you know, office man who used to open the door and close the door, his secretary and monkeys. <laughs> and that's all. Because that place was full of monkeys. Uh, and at times I used to shoo these monkeys away to get into his office. We used to go, sit down, same procedure, two sheets of paper, give him the first sheet with the update of what's happened. And I had the same sheet. We used to sit across the table, talk. And I used to tell him, this done, this done, this done, and this done. And that's all. And he never used to even offer me a glass of water, never asked for it. Not even a cup of coffee. Two years this went on. There was no social interaction, no nothing. It was completely professional to the point. Whatever I wanted, by the end of the day, things moved. Right? There were times when uh, he used to call me at odd times and say, Shankar, what's happening here? Or what's happening there? And what happened to that particular case? Where is it? I heard it's getting into some problem. So he was at it. And I used to, after some time, we, we did become a little easy with each other. Then he would say, look, I'm speaking to you today from Itarshi. I saw this firing here. And I wanted your view about it and things like that. So this went on. And then the whole thing started. Uh, it just took off. Everyone in the ministry also knew that here is a person who is going to deliver things. They are seeing things happening on ground. And you know, everything was moving. And the last time I met uh, Mr. Manohar Parikar was on the day I retired. That was 31st October 2016. I went and met him uh, and said, look, I'm most probably I'll go to join IIT. He said, yeah, good, continue, I will keep in touch. Unfortunately, we couldn't keep in touch and that was the end of the story. And later, of course, he fell ill and I mean, it was, he died a premature death. But what did we achieve at the end of two years? That when I retired after that, we were on the verge of all decks cleared for the M777 155mm ultralight howitzer deal with USA. Contrary to what many people think, that deal had a lot of technology transfer hidden in it. And that's paying good for us today. So that gun, uh, the cabinet uh, committee of security approved that uh, complete procurement three months or four months after I retired. But the whole thing was already with them, with the CCS. Then the uh, Vajra, K9 Vajra, LNT and uh, you know, Korean combination, right? That also got approved almost simultaneously. That went just about two, three months behind uh, the M777. The M777 had a political hue because we were, our, connect, our relationship with the USA was in the upswing. And that deal was very important because it set a lot of things in place for the Indo-US collaboration which you are seeing today. I used to deal with a lot of those people at that time. Uh, a lot of those guys today whose names are on paper, they were all uh, younger guys. Uh, but they were there. Right. Uh, and then so the M777 got a bit of a lead on all this. It did a lot for all of us. It did a lot for the army and the artillery. And then of course the K9 Vajra, which just came a month later into the pipeline and that got ordered. Okay. Then Danush, the first regiment of Danush was ordered at that time. That trials, everything, a lot of tribulations done and dusted. The fourth gun was a gun called Sharang. Now, Sharang was completely indigenous, which is a 155mm gun mounted on a, the chassis of a 130mm gun. That final trials also, one of the last things I told him, I said, sir, I've done the final trials and you'll get one gun out of this. Don't hesitate, just go in for it without thinking. He said, why? I said, it's only two crores per gun. 
as against 20 crores for an ultralight hope. So he says, that's the difference. I said, yeah, that's the difference. And that is also, the good thing is all these four guns have entered service. What ha didn't happen for 30 years before 1916, uh, sorry, uh, 2016, uh, between 2014 and 2016, when Man Manohar Parikar was the defense minister, he enabled it to happen. I mean, without him, let me be very clear, this wouldn't have gone through. Okay, <laughs> so that went through. Even more important, Pinaka rockets. That was under a lot of problems. So one day again, in one of those interactions, I told him, I said, sir, everyone is giving me uh, why this thing can't be done. Uh, I'll tell you why it can be done, why it should be done. He says, no, I do, don't have to tell me why Pinaka, we need Pinaka rockets. We need rockets, we need long range rockets, there are no two ways about it. Tell me how. I said, this is the way. And he made that way. And let me tell you, he gave some uh, out of the box solutions in the next uh, uh, meeting of the Defense Acquisition Council. Today we are reaping the benefits. He also paved the way. He said, I have a method. I told him, look, I'm going to do something to extend the range of Pinakas. He says, do what you want. By then, I, he had, I mean, he was fully confident of what I would do. He said, you do what you want, just carry on. So I went to Hyderabad, met the director of RCI at that time. That's the present essay to RM, uh, Dr. S Satish Reddy, we sat together, put in a guidance package for the Pinaka. And within one year, even before the project was ordered, we were firing that Pinaka. I mean, that was something fantastic. It just tells us that if, we, if India has to do a thing, it will do. And if you have the right kind of people at a thing, you can do it. So this was a combined eff uh, effort of Dr. Uh, Parikar. Mr. Manohar Parikar, Dr. Satish Reddy and self, we put that through. Today, you have the technology, you have already uh, 10 regiments of Pinaka in service. So, rockets. The third important thing, and I think that's critical, was ammunition. You know, you have to understand this. In 2010, or no, 2014, I remember an uh, article in Hindu which said uh, the Indian artillery is an artillery in search of guns without ammunition. That was the headlines. Okay. So I said, look, this is a pretty bad thing to happen. How can India be without ammunition? Because if you don't have ammunition, you can't fight a war. So we worked on it. Uh, then, of course, uh, I gave a plan out. At that time, our ammunition levels were low. We had problems in fuses. We had problems in propellants. We had problems in shells and certain other ammunition. So I gave him a plan. He said, just carry on. And whenever there was a bottleneck, I would tell him and he would step in and he would move. And things would happen. And I had a tremendous working relationship with them. By the time I retired, things started turning around. And they were visible. In fact, they were so visible that uh, uh, they were around September, August, September 2016. Uh, if you remember, I mean, I mean, yeah, August, uh, when, was, when was the Balakot strike? Yeah, 2019, I thought. Balakot no, no, no. Was, uh, Balakot was in... Uri no, was 2016. 2016, yeah. September. Two, yeah, yeah, September. Mm. September 2016, we went in, at, in across uh, for those first surgical strikes. Yes. When we carried out the first surgical strike, there was a situation where it was likely that we could get some reaction from Pakistan. So we took stock of the artillery ammunition. I remember still then the chief and the DGMO and everyone worried do, will we have adequate ammunition? Because the thinking was that we didn't have adequate ammunition. But we had worked. We found that we had enough and more was in the pipeline. To the extent 
Uh, I remember telling uh, late uh, General Bipin Rawat, he was the vice chief and I had known him well. And uh, in fact, we had done high command together, we had done a few postings also together. So one day I went and told him, I said, Bipin, look at this, you have adequate ammunition, don't worry. When that moment with Pakistan went through, and then I explained to him, I said, these are the things I have put in place, you just push it through, things will be okay. After that, never spoke of it, nothing. But, important thing, I, it was 2017, when Doklam happened, India could take the step, the way it took in, uh, in Sikkim, yes. and stop the Chinese soldiers from going ahead. That was a delicate time, I thought. And I thought to myself, why is India doing this? India is doing this, we have adequate ammunition to handle Chinese. By then our stocks had started uh, coming to normal. And by the time 2020 Doklam took place, the way we reacted, the way everything, I knew I had, you know, uh, the fundamentals of ammunition planning was in, not in, in place on ground. And the full marks to Mr. Manohar Parikar for his enablement of this. Of course, it was a combination, some was imported uh, because you didn't, you couldn't wait, you know, to make your own. We had to jump start something, so some he allowed import, some he pushed for indigenous procurement, some he pushed for indigenous design and development. And all this have come in place at this point of time. So I thought, uh, and plus, uh, since I dealt with him and I was in that, that level, even the Rafal deal wouldn't have come but for him. We wouldn't have had the Rafals today if he was not around. Probably it would have just collapsed and we wouldn't have had them at all. Yeah, a lot of people say, why only 36? You should have heard that 110 plus as per the original deal. Uh, I look at it this way. He was around, we at least we got 36. He was taken off, after that we have not got any. You know, you miss a man uh, when you see that you don't have. Uh, we've had two defense ministers, three defense ministers after that. Uh, very good defense ministers. Um, but that man knew. He knew how to make things happen. Uh, well, I'm not saying that these defense ministers were not good. Uh, like uh, Rajnath Ji is very good. So was Mrs. Nirmala Sitaraman. But on a comparative scale, and uh, late Mr. Arun Jaitley was also the defense minister for some time. Uh, you com compare these people, he stood uh, you know, head and tall. Uh, shoulders above, head and shoulders, yeah, head and shoulders above uh, the others. Because for the simple reason, he, he was a, after all, an IIT graduate. Right, right. And he knew technology. So anyone from anyone in these places couldn't poodle fake with him. He would catch them. And one thing I've seen, if he came to know that a person was tr telling the truth and he was sincere about it, it didn't, after that he would back him completely. And it's not as if I didn't have problems. See, the Ministry of Defense and this whole business of defense planning and acquisition and procurement and development is a bit of a snake pit. <laughs> you know, you could get bitten anywhere if you put your hand <laughs> into it. Uh, so, I had my tribulations there, severe tribulations, like people would, were gunning for me, a lot of letters, yeah, wo, all that. So I used to tell him, look, today this letter has come against me and this is what it is. It, this is the uh, thing and after that you take a call. And he used to say, okay, I'll take a call, don't worry, you leave, leave it to me. Mm. And under other conditions, probably I would have been sacked. But with him, because he was confident that I will deliver, things happened well. So, and also the fact that I remember one of, I, mean, I had a lot of projects going simultaneously. 
seven projects, major gun projects, which and ammunition and rockets and missiles and Brahmos, everything. So I remember one person saying, look, Shankar, why are you handling so many projects simultaneously? Because the tendency till then was one big project was great, you know. So that itself was high risk. I said, look, it's very simple. Uh, you have to do it for the nation. He said, look, if you try so much, your head will get cut. I said, I have only one head. It can get cut only once. <laughs> the second time won't happen. <laughs> Either I succeed or I go. It doesn't matter. And, we, and thanks to uh, Mr. Manohar Parikar and his backing, we succeeded. End of story. Viewers, um, what you saw was, you know, how India grows. It depends upon a few good men. And, and that is a very important takeaway here. Also, many of you will comment on P. Guru's videos in a well-intentioned way. Why aren't we going and striking Pakistan back for something that they do across the border here? There's a lot of planning that goes into it because you need to not only plan for your retribution, but the counter retribution that's going to come. You have to be prepared for that four or five steps. Unless you do all that, you can't just jump in. Some do it and then they, they hope to somehow avoid the backlash, but they're not very successful. So uh, I hope, you know, you all watched it till the end. There is a tendency to flip across. There are a lot of life lessons that you can get from this. And, and uh, combine this with yesterday's uh, address that Annamalai gave about the impact of artificial intelligence in IIT Madras. There, there is a, there's a message here. The ministers going forward for India have to be very, very good. Uh, the, just because you happen to be a political leader doesn't entitle you to become a minister because a good person at a good spot can want, make, create wonders work miracles. That's the takeaway here. General Ravi Shankar, uh, I, I don't know, I, it was a fascinating conversation. I love to listen to all the things that you've uh, shared with our viewers and uh, hopefully this will encourage them to go and listen to Ghana Shah. Uh, by the way, sir, I listen to many of the conversations and I listen end to end. Okay. I, I'm not one of those fast forward guys. I make time and then I listen to it because there is so much information. And, and if you are really serious, sometimes I even go back to understand what you said uh, to, to try to make sense of it. You know, uh, that is what it is. You need to, I mean, if at my age I can do it. Some of you are half, maybe even less than that of my age. No excuses. That is how you become good at what you do. Thank you once again, General Ravi Shankar. Welcome. And viewers, like, share and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.